Of course, they say the best way to become a millionaire is to start by being a billionaire. <laughs> that's where you can never go wrong, you know. Of course, you can invest your money and wait for it to work slowly, but that takes a bit more time. We're going to give you better tips mm -hmm. than that from an investment advisor in just a minute on how to make the most of your money, so stay tuned for it. Welcome back. Now, when it comes to investing your hard-earned money, the average person tends to hesitate. That's because they usually associate the word investment with risky business. Some might even think investments are only for those with good financial knowledge or that investing in stocks means you'll have to keep track of share prices every day. Well, our next guest, Caden Chang, disagrees. He says these are just misconceptions. He teaches others how to invest and joins us this morning to debunk some long-held investment myths. Same time, he's going to give us some tips also as well. Good morning, Caden. Thanks for joining us. Morning. Okay, so let's talk about these myths that you identified. The first one says investment is risky, you know, to, to sort of, uh, I guess we all assume that you have to put some money and you have to be able to afford to lose what it is that you have put in as well. Is that a myth? In fact, that's a myth. Let me give you an analogy. Most people, well, they, they will have this misconception that in order to make big bucks, you need to put in huge amount of mm -hmm. money, which is a huge amount of risk. Mm -hmm. Now, let me give you an analogy. Assuming that you no know, three of us, we are serving online and we have identified a nice pair of shoes. And this nice pair of shoes costs $1,000, for mm -hmm. example. And we are very interested, but we find it very, very expensive. So what we do is maybe a couple of months down the road, we don't wait for a discount. So if we, a couple of months later, if we buy the pair of shoes at $200 mm -hmm. instead of 1000 mm -hmm. our risk is $200. In case you know, the shoe mm -hmm. doesn't work out, it's not, totally not wearable. But having said that, when the discount is over, and we are able to sell the shoes. In fact, we are able to make eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So you, the risk is two hundred. Your return is eight hundred. Now, mm -hmm. on the other hand, if let's say you buy a pair of shoes at eight hundred dollars, mm -hmm. so you risk losing the eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But if you are able to sell it a thousand, in fact, you realize that your margin is only two hundred. Right. So, yeah. So low, low risk, higher margin, but and this higher risk. But that's on an assumption risk. there will be a sale. I mean, you know, uh, yes, and then when yes. it comes to stocks, on assumption that it will go down. I oh suppose. yeah, yeah. So in fact, for all sort of business, there's always a business cycle, and sales always come. Mm. The only problem we doesn't know is we do not know when. Mm. So if you look back, in, let's say a couple of years ago. Uh, stopped on sale. In fact, it's during the economic crisis in 2008 and 2009. Mm -hmm. Everything is almost like half price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's a reason why things go on sale. Sometimes it's because they're on their way to going out of business maybe, or I mean, yep. there's a reason why the share prices go from $5 to $2. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, mm -hmm. ah, should I buy now? And then what if it goes to $1 next? Then what do you do? Ah, okay, okay. So, you see, uh, the share price, we need to appreciate from an uh, investor perspective that the share price has got nothing to do with the value of the company in the short term. Okay. Now, let me give you an example. Now, during the point of time when it's 208 or 209, if you visit any McDonald's restaurants or Starbucks cafe and so on, you realize there's a, still a huge amount of crop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but having said that, on the share price, it's selling a half price or even a fraction of it. Now, if right now, if you look at Starbucks right now, the share price is maybe around US $70. And during a time, you're selling at $10. Mm -hmm. But the business was still doing well. Mm -hmm. So, can you imagine that the value, the company still provide value, is doing well? But the share price is selling like one seventh of mm -hmm. the share price, which mm -hmm. is offering now. So I suppose when you want to invest in stocks, you want to identify that business cycle where, where I suppose there's a good bargain and you know the prices are relatively low, and then you jump in then. Uh, yes, in, in a certain way. So the key, in fact, is to identify a good business. That's point number one. The fundamentals. The fundamentals. The second one is to evaluate the worth of the companies. That means uh -huh. how much the stock is worth. Yeah, and then the rest is just a pure waiting game. So, so look at the company itself and see what it is worth and whether you, know, you yeah. feel that it's a company that can stay on for long term will eventually yes. make business yes. uh, or make money in that sense. Yes, yes, yes. Which means forget about the share price now, just don't worry about looking at it every week. Just You're absolutely right. In fact, the last thing one we want to do is in fact to look at the share price. Mm -hmm. yeah, looking at the share price should be the last thing that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we should spend most of our time trying to analyze the performance in the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That should be the focus for all are, investors. Are all of us, any layman, I can just go online, open, uh, look at their annual report, look through mm -hmm. their website and be able to evaluate the company effectively? Um, no, not really. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if let's say I'm a newbie, I have no investment experience or financial mm -hmm. experience. In fact, you need to really learn something about accounting uh, mm -hmm. to understand more about companies before you really jump in. Mm -hmm. The key is really to get an education. So That's when really you are investing and yeah. you want to find the worth of the company or the mm -hmm. value, what, what are the key things that you look out for? Okay, 
So if let's say I want to value a company, I can divide into a couple of steps. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, the first step I call it A, which stands for assess the company. Mm -hmm. Now if you want to assess a company, there are two categories. The first category is to look at the qualitative part. Mm -hmm. That means how does the revenue book work, you know, what, what are the things that they sell. Uh, for example, McDonald's, you know, they sell burgers, they make money through rental and so on. The other one which is to look at the numbers. Okay, which is why mm -hmm. uh, if a newbie investor really need to mm -hmm. understand a bit mm -hmm. of accounting terms. Now, once you assess the company, you know there's a great company, it's going to be here, it's going to be here for the next 10 mm -hmm. years. The next one is to value it, okay? Mm -hmm. okay, to know how much it's worth. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if let's say we value it, let's say the company Coach, which sells handbag, mm -hmm. okay? Let's say we value it as in one stock is worth $50. Mm -hmm. okay. And right now, let's say it's selling at 60. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do? We just, we just wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how long do we need to wait? We wait for a bargain. And that usually takes place during bad times. Mm -hmm. okay. Economic crisis, or it could be a short-term problem, or it could be some form of scandals, or it could be some form of bad news. And I guess if the company keeps on doing well, getting higher and higher, you just say, well, sorry, I missed the boat, let me look at some yeah. other company. Yes, in fact, that's what you do. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. What about, um, you know, the rule of thumb, people say that if you want to make big bucks, you have to invest big bucks as well. I mean, is that true? Or can I start something, you know, with, I don't know, like $2,000 and, yeah. and invest and still expect high return? Uh, there's a very huge possibility. Let me give you an example. If let's say any investor want to start, in fact around 2,000 or 3,000 is more than enough. Mm -hmm. And of course, it varies according to the companies that you're looking up for. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example of a local company, SBS Transit. Mm -hmm. Now, as of, as of yesterday, it's selling at probably around a dollar and 30 cents. And in the Singapore context, you need to buy a minimum of 100 shares, which, mm -hmm. is, a con uh, which is one lot. Mm -hmm. So 1,000 multiplied by 130 will be 1,003. Right. So in fact, you can be a minor shareholder just by using around right. 2,000, 3,000. Mm -hmm. And in the US context, is you can buy one share. Mm -hmm. So if coach is $50, you can just spend $50. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so in fact, it's not really, you know, shouldn't be expecting like 10 or 1,000 or 100,000. Yeah. In uh -huh. fact, a couple of thousand would do. Right. Yeah. So I guess it depends also on what you're hoping to achieve. What is your end goal? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. should that be worked out before you even start investing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, uh, in fact, you're absolutely right. One of the key thing that before we start investing, in fact, is to know our financial objective. Yeah. So then you reverse engineer, mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. backwards. So let's say you want to retire, as example, let's say you want to retire by 50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So from now until 50, maybe it's 20 years, let's say. So within these 20 years, we need to ask ourselves, you know, how much savings do we have? Mm -hmm. How are we going to allocate our salary, our savings, such that you know, at the end of 20 years, we're going to achieve our financial mm -hmm. objective. So mm -hmm. that should be the first thing, even before we talk about whether it's investing in stocks or properties and so on. Right, mm -hmm. right, yeah. okay. That's important. So we brought up a few myths that you have helped, uh, sure. helped us to bust, but what are the guiding rules that you go by? I mean, from what you're saying, I gather that, you know, patience would be a key thing as well. Well, patience <coughs> is one of the utmost important things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How, how do you judge, um, you know, or what, what are, are the your top three rules if you had you, to, yeah, okay. basically, Follow. before you go into any investment, what okay. are some of the rules you abide by? Okay, the first rule, in fact, is uh, never lose money. That's the most important rule. Now, so why is that so? Ma majority of the investors, they, you know, when they invest, their rule is, in fact, to constantly make money. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between the mindset of not losing money and the mindset of always make money? Mm -hmm. Now, let me give you an example. So if, let's say, all of us, we have a savings of $100 now. So if we lose $50, we are losing 50%. Correct. Okay. But in order for us to make back the original amount, mm -hmm. you require us to make back 100%. Mm -hmm. So you realize that it's easier to lose money, but it's difficult to make money. Mm -hmm. Which is why the first rule, in fact, is never lose money. So do I money. extrapolate from that that you're saying when you make a, 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 a certain amount of gain, you should just come out instead of staying in there for too long because you would risk yourself losing that? Hey, get that, ca capital gain that you okay. got. Yeah, that will depends on the company you're looking at and mm -hmm. your financial objective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, one of the, you know, another extra rule, in fact, is really to hold on to the company as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's a great company. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Let's say Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. In the entire world, there's only one that sells Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. other than one which is Pepsi. Mm -hmm. So if, let's say, I'm an investor myself, Coca-Cola will be a company that I will absolutely have no intention to sell, even there's a capital gain. Right. Because in addition to the capital gain, we are gaining other things. For example, you're talking about dividends. Mm, yeah. I see. <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. So right, this is right. the first uh, rule. The second rule, in fact, is to, before you invest, you really need to understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Whether it's properties, whether it's wine yeah. or anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why is that so? Because the moment you know what you're doing, you not know, all of us, are, we can in fact sleep mm -hmm. comfortably. And mm -hmm. that's very important. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, 
you'll make irrational decisions like yeah. selling or... So just understand your product at least, right? Exactly. Okay, what's the last one? Yeah, the last one, in fact, is to look for companies that has a durable competitive advantage. Now, mm -hmm. what do you mean by durable competitive advantage? For example, companies with big brand names. Mm -hmm. So if you want to buy a burger, the first thing that comes to mind is McDonald's. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, you want to buy, let's say, coffee, Starbucks mm -hmm. would be one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you want the company that really you know, it's doing now, yeah, right. and it's going to be doing well for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so these are three key tips. Okay. Okay. All right, Thank so you Kaden so much, there, Kaden. Kaden Chai giving us some tips on how you can grow your wealth. Of course, like you said, you know, a lot of it is uh, find out, be aware on your own, read up, understand what it is you're doing before yeah. you go into any investment, because once you put money down, uh, I mean, you've got to be sure about what you're doing before you start. So do a bit of homework and research. Anyway. <laughs>